What's up guys, welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we are going to be talking week three, risers and fallers, looking at all the players across the XFL that either saw a giant gain or drop in their fantasy value, but even some guys that um, I'm recommending that you hold steady on regardless of their performance in week two. Uh, we're going to break all those guys down, but hey, if you're looking for fantasy content, click that like and subscribe button. We'll be posting stuff about the XFL every single day from here on out. Anyway, not going to waste any more time. Let's get started right away. All right, guys, so we're going to go team by team, look at the risers, fallers, and some players that I'm recommending that you hold steady on, but hey, I also want to mention too, I have stats up, my, up on my website now, so click that link in the description box. You're going to be able to access everything on my website that you need to be able to maintain your fantasy league. Now there's stats up there, there's weekly rankings, trade advice, everything that you need to be able to maintain a uh, strong fantasy team, so make sure you check that out. All right, let's get started. And look at these guys, we'll begin with the Dallas Renegades. Now, obviously, Cameron Artis Payne is one of the largest risers on the week after that tremendous fantasy performance of 99 yards and two touchdowns on the ground along with five receptions. Just dominated uh, pretty much um, all around. But don't sleep on Lance Dunbar. He also had a second week with six targets. So he's being used heavily in the passing game. While he doesn't have as much value as Cameron Artis Payne in the run game, he still is averaging a very high yards per carry. So th both of those guys should be owned and you might be able to sneak in Lance Dunbar into a trade based on how valuable Cameron Artis Payne has become. Jeff Bidette looked pretty good. Uh, he missed a portion of the game due to an injury, but when he was playing, um, you know, he got a decent amount of targets, including the end zone. And then Donald Parham uh, saw a meteoric rise to his value when he received 11 targets, which for a tight end is massive. So he's most likely owned in a lot of your leagues, but his value uh, jumped up quite a bit this week. Uh, Flynn Nagel barely was involved at all with Landry Jones coming back, so that's a huge concern considering Jazz Ferguson wasn't even playing, so he saw a huge drop to his value. Uh, and then we're going to hold steady. Landry Jones uh, looked up and down in his return. I think that he'll continue to improve, so we didn't drop or increase his value too much. We'll see um, where he ends up falling here in a couple weeks. Jazz Ferguson was an act inactive on Sunday, so that was definitely a bit of a bummer. We wanted to see what he would do with Landry Jones, so we're not doing too much to his value yet. Um, we'll continue to monitor the situation going forward. As long as his injury isn't too severe, there's no reason to not, uh, downgrade him just for missing this last week. And then Sean Price, although Donald Parham is getting most of the work, is still worth rostering, and we didn't really move him too much this week. Okay, jumping over to DC. Uh, DeAndre Tompkins came back from injury this week and looked really good out there. It was definitely heavily involved with six catches on the week. Uh, definitely saw a very large boost to his value. Um, overall is you know really becoming a 1A, 1B, 1C situation there when in with the wide receivers, but I'll get to that in a second. And then Danelle Pumphrey was used as almost the primary back. Still pretty much a 50-50 split, but he looked to be used in more of those higher leverage situations, which is a bit surprising considering Jarrell Presley looked good in week one, uh, which as I speak of, Jarrell Presley saw a massive drop in his fantasy value. He's one of the bigger fallers this week. Right now, it's kind of a mess with this team. Um, they're not running the ball very efficiently with either of those backs. I would expect that to increase uh, once they uh, actually have their full offensive line back, but we'll have to continue monitoring to see uh, who ends up being the, the lead back as the season goes on. And then Kari Lee, only one catch for zero yards on the day, almost had a really nice touchdown grab, he pushed off and got a flag on that play. So um, we were kind of expecting him to kind of do this and he's already proving to do that. So. Uh, a bit unfortunate, but yes, he definitely saw a drop. Now I'm holding steady on Rashad Ross. I know that might sound funny um, because like we already had him ranked pretty high. I just wanted to put him here because I'm not dropping his value even though he wasn't on the field for the entire game. Every single time he touches the field, he's wide freaking open. I don't know why they weren't using him the whole game on Sunday. Maybe they just didn't need to, but as this league continues to go on, it's pretty clear to me from watching the game that he is their best wide receiver, and I think that they'll notice that as they review film. Okay, looking at Houston, uh, P.J. Walker saw another increase to his value as he showed that week one was not a fluke, and he's going to continue to dominate in this league. 
James Butler, uh, even though we saw more carries for Andre Williams this week, he still is the primary back to own in Houston and is their goal line back. So he saw a pretty massive boost to his value even after a giant jump last week. And then Cam Phillips, three touchdowns and has been PJ Walker's favorite target definitely saw a giant rise to his value i think that it might be a bit inflated uh you might end up um, you know if you're bold and gutsy we'll get into our trade section in a little bit but if you're bold and gutsy you might be able to uh sell him for a bit more than you should be able to uh with phillips rising we see sammy coach value fall pretty drastically right now he's had two weeks now where he's been a massive disappointment he's Having a lot of issues just have comp with confidence and catching the ball, it, it's a bit disappointing because of how highly he was drafted, but overall, I don't think that you can move on from him just yet. If he gets it together, he still has the talent to be incredibly dominant in this league. He just needs to you know, come together in those clutch moments. He's at a few moments where he's caught a huge pass, but it was he was either out of bounds or like this last week, he stepped out of bounds and then caught what would have been a touchdown pass and instead got a penalty. So. Got to hang on to him for now. Uh, don't sell low on Sammy Coates. And then also hold steady on Khalil Lewis. He's been uh, pretty involved in both week one and two. He just hasn't seen the same massive touchdowns uh, or you know the amount of red zone targets that Cam Phillips has. But Khalil Lewis is just as good as Cam Phillips. So look for that uh, production to start to even out as the weeks go on. Don't be looking to sell too low on Khalil Lewis. All right, the Wildcats. Nelson Spruce rises again. He still continues to be the top receiver and should have been the number one pick. Uh, but overall, if you have him, you're not selling him. If you, uh, or unless you're playing in a league where someone isn't paying too much attention and you can buy him, then go for it. Uh, we saw a massive fall to Eliza Hood's value. He's actually the highest, uh, has the highest percentage share of carries of any running back for their team. And thought that was really surprising he's not really involved in the past game and he also had two red zone fumbles in this game so i'm not sure if winston moss is going to punish him but look for them to use larry rose a bit more going forward all right and then we didn't move the needle on josh johnson at all he had a pretty decent debut coming back so we'll continue to see how he does as he gets a little bit more comfortable in this offense uh, Jordan Smallwood is another name that um, he didn't do as much this week, but he's received six targets in both games, and I uh, will continue to lead him in the uh, you know higher tier of wide receivers that are getting enough volume to be a wide receiver too. And then Brandon Barnes, even though he only had two catches this last week, as that offense begins to pick up a little bit more of Josh Johnson, I look for his value to go up, so I didn't drop him too much this week, so definitely hold steady on him. All right, over in the New York Guardians, the only guy I was able to identify as a potential riser here would be Marquise Williams, and that's just because Matt McGloin is probably on a pretty short lease right now. I'm hoping he can bounce back. I think he has the ability to. He looked much better in week one than he did in week two, but you can't have mental breakdowns like that. I shouldn't say mental breakdowns, but you can't have, uh, you know, where you just basically start blaming your teammates on the field and to... <laughs> to the broadcast um, how much you're pissed off at your team right now. That just doesn't look good from an optic standpoint. So hopefully they'll be able to get everything back together in New York. But Matt McGloin definitely one of the bigger followers on this week. And then Colby Pearson uh, just kind of falling along with everybody else, just not seeing the volume that we were hoping to see. I am actually holding steady on Mikhail McKay though. Mikhail McKay uh, has looked really good with a few opportunities that he's had. I think that the big games are coming for him, so if you have him hold, if you don't, go try to buy him now before he blows up in week three or four. Okay, on St. Louis, Jordan Tam, we saw another rise to his value. He just continues to be dominant in this league and looks to be uh, challenging P.J. Walker for that MVP spot. Matt Jones uh, left the game for uh, about a quarter and a half due to an injury, but it didn't seem severe. He actually came back and played a play uh, towards the end of the game so monitor that as we go forward but he was pretty much the primary back uh, for the entire time that he was in the game. Good morning Pearson L looks amazing right now I think that you might be able to still uh, grab him in trades um, definitely has been surprising me with how good he's looked and the da Damian Washington also high value here so all those guys are my risers for St. Louis. 
Unfortunately, Marcus Lucas let us down this week with only one catch. He's falling, but not in, an incredible amount. I do believe that he'll rebound, so don't sell low on him. All right, on the Seattle Dragons, Keenan Reynolds saw a giant boost to his value this week. He's had more than six targets both weeks and had that nice big touchdown bomb, but it's kind of hard to trust anything out of Seattle right now until Brandon Silvers can start throwing a little bit more consistently. Brandon Silvers definitely sees a fall to his value with that poor performance on Saturday. And then Austin Prohl also saw a dip. A lot of that has to do more though with Brandon Silvers and not so much Austin Prohl. Austin Prohl could have easily had a large touchdown in this one, just didn't work out for him. Uh, I'm holding steady on the running backs, Trey Williams and Kenneth Farrow. They've still looked good in this game, but it's hard to uh, have any production on the ground when your quarterback uh, only has one pass that was really worth uh, mentioning other than the entire game just really doing nothing. So, All right, jumping down to the final team, the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, Jacques Patrick looked really good this week, and that's a bit of a bummer for Devian Smith owners. But fortunately for that team, they're only using two running backs, so it's turning into a 50-50 split but that's actually better than a lot of the situations across the XFL, so his value went up. And then Reese Horn has been involved in most of the games. Not too much of an uptick, but definitely an uptick in his value. Uh, as I mentioned already with Debbie and Smith, um, you know, I'm still holding his values pretty steady, dropped slightly, but I have him over Jacques West Patrick. I think that he'll continue to be a little bit more of the, uh, of the one with Jacques West Patrick being the two, but hopefully, uh, we'll start seeing a little bit more clarity as the season goes on. Not giving up on Devian Smith yet. Not giving up on Daniel Williams. He had a bit of a disappointing day. He could have salvaged his day with a giant touchdown towards the end of the game. Got called back on a push-off penalty, which I thought maybe was a little bit aggressive of a call. They could have could have let that one stand, in my opinion. But Daniel Williams still looked really good, just didn't have the same production that he did in Week 1. And then Nick Truesdale is still heavily involved from a tight end perspective. The only... Uh, he's the second in tight ends amongst the targets here for his team behind only Donald Parham. Um, but Nick Truesdale is definitely a buy low right now. Just with the state of Tampa Bay's offense, they look like they're so close to finally being able to get everything to gel and click, but they just haven't been able to quite get it there. All right, so let's jump over to our buy low and sell high section. Just talking to a few names here that um, based on the risers and fallers that you might be able to get at value this week. Devian Smith is a running back that I would target this week. Again, with the way that Jock was Patrick looked, you might have some Devian Smith owners a bit freaked out by that performance. I think Devian Smith will be just fine on the season. That team likes to run the ball and they're pretty good at it thus far, have a good offensive line. So I would try to get uh, Devian Smith. And then Lance Dunbar, kind of the same thing. We're targeting running backs that are looking good, but are potentially under the radar right now because of their teammate performing well. I think you might be able to sneak Lance Dunbar into a trade for uh, a lot cheaper than you should be able to based on his actual family fantasy output. I've already mentioned Mikael McKay as one of my bigger uh, buy lows right now just with the poor performance by New York and just not involving him enough. But when he has touched the ball, he has looked every bit of the person that we drafted in the first round. So don't panic on him just yet. And if you don't have him, try to get him now before he blows up. Uh, Jazz Ferguson missed this week, which means he's probably going to be pretty cheap to acquire in trades. I'd like to just have him on my, on my bench in case he blows up when he finally does debut with Landry Jones. Uh, also mentioning Khalil Lewis. Uh, everyone is raving about Cam Phillips right now, but Khalil Lewis has been heavily involved in both games thus far and has looked pretty solid out there as well. Look for those stats to start trending a little bit closer to the uh, median for both uh, Cam Phillips and Khalil Lewis, which means an uptick in production for Lewis. Uh, if you're in need of a tight end, I've already mentioned Nick Truesdale is a good buy low this week. He still hasn't shown us uh, from a stat perspective what he's capable of, but I do believe he's going to end up performing a lot better towards the latter half of the season than he is right now. Same thing for Brandon Barnes. Both of these offenses are just trying to get everything in lockstep with one another and look for these tight ends to start seeing more production as the season goes on. All right, uh, some players that I would try to sell high on, uh, there aren't any players listed here that are like must sells. Same thing as last week, like um, there's still a lot of uh, unknowns in this league right now. So we're just trying to identify some players that if you're 
in need of a spot somewhere else. These are guys that I'd be comfortable moving on with if the value was there. Jacquez Patrick, uh, the running back there for Tampa Bay, I still think Devian Smith is going to end up being a more valuable back to own, but with the way that he looked on Saturday, you might be able to convince someone to give you someone like Lance Dunbar for him, which would be a really good trade for you. Uh, DeAndre Tompkins, after his massive performance coming back from that foot injury, uh, with Rashad Ross and Eli Rogers still there, you can't expect him to have that much of passing volume every single week. It's probably going to be split between those three guys. So his value might be a bit higher in terms of public perception right now than it was or than it actually should be. Keenan Reynolds has been the uh, you know main beneficiary in uh, or of Brandon Silver's targets, but Brandon Silver's targets are exactly that, Brandon Silver's targets. So we'll see how uh, much he'll be able to get together in this next week. But if he has another poor performance, they might bench him in favor of BJ Daniels. And we don't know who BJ Daniels will end up favoring as a receiver. Again, not a must sell, but you might be able to get Keenan Reynolds uh, sold to a Seattle Dragons fan for more than you should be able to. And then LaDamian Washington is a guy I really like a lot. So definitely not a must sell, but you might be able to sell him a bit higher this week based on his uh, strong performance on Sunday. And you might be able to get a piece that you need on another part of your team. Uh, and then in terms of buy high, if you're able to, it be very, uh, might be very difficult to do so. But Donald Parham, if you play in a league where you have to start a tight end, has clearly jumped up to the most valuable tight end. And you might be able to uh, convince the owner that this uh, week two performance was a fluke. It's not a fluke. Um, so try to get him on your team if you can. And then we don't have any players that we identified as sell lows for uh, 50 cents on the dollar this week. So anyway, uh, that is my risers and ballers and trade uh, targets this week. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, check out my website at fantasyaddictionnetwork.com for rankings, all of my trade advice, my trade tiers, trade calculator, uh, rankings, daily advice, everything that you need to be able to succeed in an XFL fantasy fashion. And then if you want XFL fantasy news, click that like and subscribe button, posting stuff every day for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.